Hey, what is up guys, JTX here. This is by far the strongest bleed bow I've ever played out of all the leagues that bleed bow has been around. I wanted to quickly talk you through some findings from this league as well as some of the cool uh, new interactions that we've discovered. Now the core build archetype is a frenzy slash endurance slash affliction charge stacking with Ralakesh and Olesses. Uh, this is really a uh, high budget in terms of what bleed bow can be played as and the idea is to try grab as much frenzy charges as possible throughout all of your gear to really double dip with the endurance and affliction charges you get from both. I'll quickly go over my gear and also explain a little bit on how to get certain pieces of this gear. Uh, obviously you don't need the exact gear you see in this video to get most of the effects. This is just a min max fully realized version of the build so if you guys were curious on seeing how far you can push the build this is getting pretty close to the upper end of what's possible in this character. Firstly with my bow, this is a plus one max frenzy charge synth base citadel bow. Uh, the base itself isn't too expensive, uh, mainly the, the cost comes from actually trying to craft this. There's a lot of videos out there on how to craft fizz bows, so I'm not going to explain in this guide video how to make one of these bows. Uh, if there's interest for crafting the gear seen in this video, I'll make a separate uh, guide for that at a later point. But just know that you should try to look for a really high fizz roll here and also try to finish it off with attack speed, damage for frenzy, and dot multi. The enchantment itself is actually really, really cool. For the first couple of weeks, the two enchantments we were playing around with was either culling strike or increased fizz damage, which would increase the fizz damage on your bow. Uh, I actually found out that a level 10 shock ground, uh, when you trigger it, is actually insanely powerful simply because it's a generic 15% shock. And the cool thing about Olesa's belt is if you press Alt here, uh, Affliction Charges, besides just giving us 8% more damage with ailments, which is our bleed, it also gives 8% more effect of non-damaging ailments, so this includes Shock. So what this means is with my build, I have uh, 12 Frenzy Charges, so then therefore 12 Affliction Charges. That's 96% increased effect of Shock. So what you'll see in some of the videos here is I'm actually hitting a 29% shock on uber pinnacle bosses and this is no investment at all besides disenchantment. Disenchantment alone is adding a huge chunk of damage uh, to the build and it's a really really cool interaction that we can actually utilize with the Olesa's belt from the affliction charges. The helmet itself is Usurper's Penance, it's just a really generically good uh, helmet for damage. Obviously the corruption is very important here, uh, getting a 90% cost reservation multiplier lets us run our triple aura setup, so Malevolence, Pride creative elements, uh, that's linked with an enlightened here. Uh, nothing too crazy about this. The cheaper way of getting this helmet instead of buying it, I believe when I bought it, it was like 15 to 20 divines, is you can get just regular Eternal Burgonade, which I corrupted with this implicit, and then you use a Tainted Mythic Orb, and there's a 1 in 13, 1 in 14 chance of turning it into a Usurper's Penance. It's the only base type for Eternal Burgonades, so that is one way of getting it for cheap, otherwise you can just buy it outright. This is a plus one max frenzy charge synthesis base ring. Um, I've crafted this with pretty much everything that you would want on the build. So Chaos Res, Ellie Res, Life, DOT, Multi. You don't have to go for a ring like this. You can easily get away with a Circle of Guilt, which is the synthesis a ring for Herald of Purity. Uh, just go for one of those with plus one max frenzy. They essentially do the same thing. Um, the damage will be very, very similar. The only difference is uh, getting reses. You have to pick up reses every somewhere else on your build, potentially on your quiver or on your amulet. This just puts less pressure on the rest of our gear because we can pick up so much of our resists on this single ring and then we can land or touch it so it mirrors it. Um, obviously, this is super high investment. Uh, you don't need anything like this to do any of the content in the game. I was able to already blast tier 17 maps on a circle of guilt. Uh, this is just for really, if you want to min-max the build, this is potentially a, a upgrade you can look into. One of the really big changes is using a restless ward as the chess piece. This synergizes incredibly well with our charge stacking build. Uh, as you can see here, we get 4% increased movement speed and 75 uh, life regen per charge we have. Uh, we have 12 in this build, so that's 48% increased movement speed and upwards of 750, 800 life regen uh, per second, which is absolutely insane. One of the key problems I wanted to try fix with the initial version of this build was the speed. Obviously, um, you weren't that fast without the challenger charges anymore, and you'd only really have access to a Quicksilver to get you around the map most of the time, and if that was down, you're not the fastest build in the world. This actually remedies a lot of that, giving us a massive chunk of movement speed, also giving us a nice amount of regen on top of it. I've got corrupted with plus one max res and reduced crit damage taken. Uh, you can obviously go for any combo of mods you want. You can go for increased damage, you can go for um, one of these mods, both of these mods, whatever's available on the market. I just went for more defensive options on my chest because we do hit dot cap very easily on this build. 
and I'll show you the POV numbers a bit later on how ridiculous our damage has become. Moving on to Quiver, very generic Quiver, double dot multi, uh, life. Uh, there's a lot of videos out there on how to craft a Quiver like this. I think RPG uh, Egan has a really good video, literally one minute video, tells you how to craft one of these. I made this myself for, for less than 10 divines. Perk Stamulet, this has been the, kind of the flavor of the league. This one hasn't been misted yet. This would kind of be the base you would use into the mist where you would reflect this and get either potentially up to double these stats. Uh, obviously right now, this is only tier three life. So I would roll this for tier one life before I do any reflecting mists. But this is a example of what you could do. And then if you missed it, you go up to potentially 100 dot multi, four, 500 life and 160% increased damage while leeching. Absolutely insane stats on an amulet like this. And also you notice that there's barely any stats in this build. If you look at my actual stats, I'll cover it in a second. Uh, but we don't need any stats at all for our gear, which is an amazing uh, feature of this variant of the build. Also for amulets, obviously I don't expect people to be going for a focused amulet with the base being so expensive. These amulets are essentially the same, if not a little bit better than the one I'm using at the moment before it actually gets reflected. Uh, so amulets like these, just the life and DOT, um, you don't really care about the negative stats because we are Supreme Lost Temptation. These are really, really good amulets for really cheap this league. See if you can find one of these uh, on the market. I think I bought both of these for either one to two divines each. I can imagine this might be a little bit higher after this video. These are both good examples of really powerful amulets you can get from the Reflecting Mist mechanic. Uh, alternatively, you can also get a conventional amulet like this with a double dot multi. So one with physical damage over time and regular dot multi. Look for one with life and potentially a res. That's something you can craft. Those are just alternative options. These amulets are more than enough for endgame. And this will be your aspirational amulet where you would use a reflecting mist. I will try reflecting mist as amulet after I get a better life roll. So that could be a really cool upgrade for the build. I don't know if I'm gonna use a lock considering locks are 80 divines and the base is 120 for the amulet. So I don't think it's a good use of money. Probably just be a YOLO reflect and then we'll see what we get. Uh, our gloves, uh, these are really, really cool gloves. Um, made possible with the recombinator this league. This is a plus one max frenzy cursed with vulnerability on hit gloves with suppress life and resistance. These gloves, are incredibly rare uh, without the Recombinator and incredibly hard to get if you, if the Recombinator did not exist this league. Um, if you don't know how to make a pair of gloves like these or don't want to go to the effort of Recombinating to make a pair of gloves like these, you can easily use Hands of the High Templar with the Double Corrupt with the Max Frenzy and Vulnerability. Um, making these gloves is not a huge uh, issue, mainly getting the bases of the plus one Max Frenzy and the Vulnerability. That will be a bottleneck in terms of what bases you can recombine. Really, really good pair of gloves to help us cap our suppress in this build. That's something worth looking into if you really want to push this build to the limit. So there's one more cool thing you can do with gloves as a choice. There is a pair of gloves called Worm Slime. You can also go for those gloves as a option. They have a really cool effect with Valakesh. You gain Rampage while maximum endurance charges. And since you have Valakesh, you always count as having maximum endurance charges. Therefore, you always have Rampage. It also gives you 4% reduced mana cost per endurance charge. So with 12 endurance charges, you're looking at 48% reduced mana cost, so you can drop all of the mana nodes on your tree and essentially make your skills almost free to cast. They also have the effect of a socket of gems supported by level five concentrated effect. This could make your rain of arrows saturation a little bit smaller on the grouping. Uh, this is a really good pair of gloves for mapping if it's a available as an option. I don't think there are too many pairs with a plus one frenzy and a curse. Just keep that in mind as also an option. Uh, once again, this is just a lessers with a uh, all res corruption. Nothing crazy about this gear. And then this is a Ralakesh with Suppress. Suppress is kind of nice for helping us cap out the rest of our Suppress. Put a Flask, just a generic Life Flask, Armor Flask with a chance to avoid being stunned. A Quicksilver Flask, Bottled Faith. Uh, Bottled Faith is something I only added in towards the very end of this build. I think most of the footage of me fighting the bosses does not have a Bottled Faith. This is just a generic increased damage taken a multiplier. Really good because we don't have a lot of that in our build itself. And also gives us a nice source of regen when we pop it on the ground. Absolutely not necessary. I used a gold flask for most of my farming. I wouldn't even use this for most maps anyway. This would just be for pure boss fighting. But just something to consider if you really want to push the damage in this build. A bottle of faith is really good for giving us another vector of scaling damage. For Genesis, uh, not much to say about this flask. Straight up makes the build more tanky. Helps us cap the rest of our chaos res. A good all round flask that you can use on almost any character and it'll be useful. Uh, throughout the whole entire league. If you can't afford either one of these two unique flasks, that's fine. You can just slot in a regular sulfur flask and a regular amethyst flask. You don't need to have either of these flasks for the build to work. It's just something to consider as an end game upgrades. Now, as promised, my passive tree. So I mentioned in a few videos before and in the past that Supreme Ostentation is kind of the end goal for this character. 
where you no longer care about attribute requirements at all and you fully tattoo your tree. So this is something that was possible uh, in Trials of the Ancestors League and you can kind of see my tree here, it's been fully tatted. Um, so to fully abuse the fact that we don't care about stats anymore. This also helps with our gear, that we don't need to pick up stats anywhere on our gear. For the actual tattoos, we pretty much grabbed attacks have chance to cause bleeding everywhere possible, letting us fully drop all of the bleed notes on our tree, even dropping these chance to bleeds here and turning this into DOT multi. Uh, for the dex nodes, I've gotten Ramako Shaman for chance to suppress. Uh, I'm aware these tattoos are very expensive now. I believe they're more than three divs a pop. But this is just min max version of the build. If you do want to cap suppress through your tree, you do it with this. And we further abuse the tattoos with unnatural instinct by taking a suppressed node here and another lightning res or chaos res node here on this int node. Talking about the tree itself, not too many changes to the initial endgame version of the tree. Uh, we're still pathing up to the right to grab the frenzy charge here. Uh, and we're still taking entrench here. This tree has seen a couple of tweaks uh, to its end game variation. You can see I tattooed up here because I've grabbed Inveterate. Um, this is a potential option, a budget, more budget option. If you can't afford to tattoo your whole entire tree, you can grab Inveterate and these nodes here for a big chunk of spell suppress. Uh, you probably drop like these damage nodes here. You probably drop Disciple of the Unyielding and then instead put the points towards Inveterate up here. Tree's pretty self-explanatory. We grab another cluster here so we can put more jewels in. Our main difference is instead of taking a Glancing Blows Impossible Escape, we're now taking a Avatar Fire Impossible Escape. This lets us run Nomadic Teachings here to give us plus two to all max Ellie res, and also lets us take some of the nodes down here. Uh, you can see there's also a node here for 37% Chaos res. This node is what I actually used until I got some Chaos res on my rings. It's also combined with these two nodes here, Total Dominance, Total Bloodlust. Both of these are just insane damage multipliers, so 120% each. And then uh, Gemling Training here. So this is with Kasparo, this is 11.22.0. Uh, please use the Timeless Draw Calculator in POB to find something similar to this. You're looking for nodes on what are these four nodes. So the looking for Expertise, Ancestral Knowledge, and Magnetic Strikes and Arsonist. So you're looking for nodes on these four. That, that'll be your value points on where you can actually get the most value with your Impossible Escape plus Timeless Jewel combo. Quick note about Zendency as well. Uh, we dropped Endless Hunger over here to re-grab Headsman. Headsman is incredibly strong uh, late game for fighting bosses as well as for tier 17s. It's a really, really good node for cutting a fight short by letting you call the last 20% of enemies HP. Endless Hunger is also a really nice quality of life node. I'm kind of torn between these two nodes. Headsman for more damage, Endless Hunger for more quality of life. Uh, if you do take this node, you don't have to worry about being stunned. But I think in our case, Headsman is just too good for fighting uber bosses and for fighting tier 17s. Personally, i go with Headsman if you get enough damage and utility in the rest of your build. Uh, but obviously, uh, it's a player preference here, but I'd recommend Headsman. One of the coolest things about this version of the build is you don't have to actually use a snipe with the puncture setup. If you notice my puncture right here, it's purely just on a regular puncture link. It no longer has a snipe attached to it. Uh, this is in part because of how much damage we actually scale on the build. We actually hit the bleed dot cap without snipe. Um, you don't hit the dot cap on uber pinnacles, so if you did want to farm uber pinnacles, I recommend you put a snipe support in, but for almost every other content, including tier 17s, you can get away with having just a puncture by itself uh, without having a snipe. This has been like the number one request for everyone that's actually played uh, this build and had a problem with snipe. Uh, here's the good news for you guys, you don't actually have to use snipe anymore with this version of the build. Just to sum up the gem links now, uh, you have a puncture linked to Awaken Swift Affliction, this is interchangeable with snipe depending on the content that you're doing. If you are doing uber pinnacles, you can put a snipe in if you want to hit the dot cap on uber pinnacles. Uh, Awaken Vicious Proj, Awaken Brutality, Volatility, Awaken Deadly Elements. For our clearing setup, we have Split Arrow, Awaken Brutality, Awaken Chain, Awaken Vicious Proj, Awaken Swift Affliction, and Volatility. Our utility links are a MAME linked to Reign of Arrows of Saturation. Mana Forge Arrows and Frenzy. My helmet is the Auras, which is Malevolence. Purity of Elements, Pride, linked to our Enlighten. Uh, in our boots, we have Frost Blink and Herald of Purity, Steel Skin, and Automation. If you do want to take this character for pure bossing, if you know you're going to be fighting bosses and not maps, you can put in a Forbidden Flame Fruit and Flesh swap for Dagger Technique. This just means all of your attacks aggravate bleeds, so straight away the enemy will be taking the triple damage bonus as if they were moving. 
uh, you just swap your gratuitous violence jewels out here with your bossing and you pop the jagger techniques in that's just a quick little uh jewel swap if you are fighting uber bosses or if you're fighting specifically single target content like i mentioned before uh, for general mapping you won't need a bottled faith i recommend putting in either a gold flask or a quartz flask if your suppressor is not capped a gold flask has a lot of value this league because of how rarity works when determining how much gold you drop from packs so having a little extra rarity doesn't hurt also my ring has also a bit of rarity as well just having a little bit of rarity on the gear is never a bad thing especially for tier 17 farming it could boost up your drops for uniques i made a list of mods that you should look out for when you're doing tier 17s i've categorized the mods into three different tiers one being annoying so these are the ones that you can easily still run but it is sometimes annoying if you get a combination of bad mods together these are viable but dangerous what this means is you can get around some of these mods for example the chance to block attack damage you can take the attack mastery on your tree where enemies cannot block your damage the other two are just mods that really make you take a lot more damage in maps you can still run these maps you've got to be a bit more careful and then this is the unrunnable category if you get any of these mods just reroll the map for something else so this is just reduced recovery rate reduced action speed reduced uh, aura effect uh, pretty much stuff that stops us from being able to leech or to regen those are the maps that we don't want to run uh, everything else is on the table this build can actually run the majority of tier 17 mods especially when you get to a point of having overwhelming damage the bleed pops from gratuitous violence really let you get away with a lot of different mods so just keep in mind these are the mods to look out for so jumping into pob we're gonna have a look at the numbers on the build itself our dps is sitting at around 30 million bleed dps combined with our slayer cull we're sitting at 37 million uh, these are very conservative estimates because we have pride at initial effect if we set it to maximum I think we're getting very close to the dot cap we also have our, our effective shock set at the minimum amount um, we always hit for at least 15% with the shocked ground and that gets amplified by our affliction charges up to a potential 29 but we're just being very conservative here and setting it at the minimum shock amount in POB uh, this is all with a puncture setup without a snipe in. This is very, very powerful because we don't have to play with the snipe playstyle anymore. We can purely play the puncture playstyle. If we go into our calcs page here, the number we're really interested in is actually the bleed DPS calculation here, and we're looking at the DPS range. Now, the DPS range is just the damage that our bleed can roll from, so the minimum value up to the maximum value. As you can see here, our minimum is 2.38 million and then our maximum is 44.4. The DOT cap in POE is actually 35.8. So any number that's above that means that we're obviously going to be hitting the dot cap uh, on the upper end of our bleeds. Moving on to the defenses of the build, uh, we are 100% spell suppressed capped. We have ailment immunity. Uh, we have about 1,200 life regen and 600 leech. We have a very respectable max hit of around 100,000 for each elemental type of our, our progenesis is up. If progenesis is down, we still have a very high max hit for elemental. As for our physical, it's a little bit lower than our elemental. I still think it's fine for all tier 17 content as well as uber content. In general, for mapping, our progenesis will be up most of the time. So we have a very, very uh, nice cushion of HP to work with. We also have a 160% movement speed modifier. So if we have Quicksilver off, we're sitting at 93 always because of the movement speed we get from Restless Ward. This is a really nice quality of life when you're going around the map, especially if your flasks have run out and you're trying to go loot things. Uh, that was probably one of the main things I wanted to fix with the original version of the build. Uh, having this movement speed makes the build feel so much nicer to play. And I don't think I can go back to a build without having at least 80% plus movement speed. Uh, in terms of the config page, what you do want to have ticked on is Frenzy Charges, Endurance Charges. Uh, if we are leeching, if we're on Consecrated Ground, if you are running a Bottled Faith. Uh, if the enemy's on the Consecrated Ground, if you're running a Bottled Faith. Uh, enemy's on Shocked Ground, so anytime we attack, we trigger a Shocked Ground. We can manually set this effective Shock. I've set it at 16, which is the very minimum that we always hit for. This is just dependent on how many Affliction Charges you have. Normally, you'll be sitting at the max amount, so you have the max additional effect of Shock. Is the enemy maimed? Yes, this is also important because in our Reign of Arrows setup, we're running a maim support here. So before we ran Life Tap, but now we've dropped it for maim. This also gives us a nice chunk of damage for free, essentially, with our Mana Forge setup. And then taking if the enemy is moving is just if we've aggravated our bleeds or not. So this is going to be 100% if we're running our Jagged Technique Jewels. Otherwise, there's going to be the 10% chance for bloodletting, and then you'll be trying to proc that with your Rain of Arrows and your Frenzy and your General Slit Arrow setup. Now, if you really wanted to see the full potential of the build or the ridiculous numbers we actually get up to with the original snipe setup, if I add a snipe back in here, so we'll set it back down to initial effect. So with one snipe stages, we're sitting at 23. 
Uh, if we go up to around two or three snipe stages, we're already hitting the dot cap on regular bosses. You have to go to uber pinnacle bosses to see what your damage goes up to. If you set it to the max number of stacks, you're sitting at 22.5 million with snipe. Uh, if we have our pride aura at max effect and we set our shock effect to the highest amount possible, uh, we're sitting at 29 million uber pinnacle DPS. So this is relevant if you are trying to go for uber pinnacles. Uh, I recommend using a snipe setup then because you can really push the damage on this build to some insane numbers. For general quality of life, just use the regular puncture setup with a raking swift affliction. Yeah, so we're still sitting at 11 million uh, bleed DPS on Uber Pinnacles, even without a snipe setup on our puncture. I've actually had a lot of fun figuring out the min max version of this build. I wouldn't have played it for almost a month if I hadn't. It's really cool what you can do with the, the weapon rune enchants this league. Uh, I didn't even realize shock ground was this ridiculously strong until I did a bit of testing and found out that it scales with our Olesses Delight. A lot of the other gear in this build is obviously aspirational. You can achieve about 80%, 70 to 80% of this result with a fraction of the cost. This has been the highest amount of investment I've ever put into a bleed character. This is by far my pinnacle version of a bleed build. I am aware there are other builds out there using the perfect agony keystone and using crit. I think those builds also have extremely high potential. However, they do have to solve a lot of problems to do with the accuracy and crit rating and that comes at the expense of your gear and your tree. I believe that this is still probably the strongest version of Lebo out there at the moment. Uh, obviously with this level of investment you're going to be getting some crazy numbers on both attack and defense. I don't think I'm going to make a character much stronger than this in terms of Bleedbo for a very long time if ever. Really really cool to see the meta of how Bleedbo shifted over time over the last year and a bit and I've had a lot of fun with this archetype overall. Hopefully you guys will check out this build as well if there's something that you wanted to try. I think it's very competitive as a tier 17 farmer. It has all the traits of a really fast mapper. You've got really good single target damage. You've got the clears for gratuitous violence and you've got the speed from Restless Ward. Um, definitely check this build out if you haven't tried it before. I think Bleed Bow is in its best state ever. If there's a lot of interest in how I made some of the really end game pieces of my gear, I'll make a follow up video talking about how to craft some of the more specific aspects of our synthesis gear, particularly the bow and the ring, and even the gloves itself. Thank you guys as always for tuning into my videos. I really appreciate everyone's support. Uh, I will have another build coming up very soon as because I've been waiting to finish this video up and finish this character and I can finally start on my auto bomber. I uh, hope to see you guys in the next video, and thanks for watching.